let's talk about change. Hello everyone, welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we are drinking a tea my sister-in-law got for me from a local tea shop in my Uncle Iroh teapot. Um, I don't know what's in this tea. So, I, the only thing I know that is in it is like a minty kind of flavor. Oh yeah, it's like minty and chamomile, and that's all I know. It's like wild flowers. It's very good. I've had it before on the podcast. Okay, in today's video, I want to talk about change and what brings on change in a person's life. Two, three podcasts ago, I did the podcast on Trisha Paytas, and some people were upset. I understand you're coming from a very specific perspective in your bubble, in your reality, and I also, I'm going to be honest with you, I can hear the trauma in your comments. I absolutely know why you're upset, but I want to calm you down because you can't live your life that upset, okay? First and foremost... In my video about Trisha Paytas, I made the statement that obviously she has changed now that she's had a baby and it's for the positive. And a lot of people were upset saying that, you know, people can't just have babies to change, but they do. And so I want you to be open to the idea that not everybody is a narcissistic parent who, who's gonna breed you into a traumatic experience. Maybe Trisha is, maybe she's not, but people change when they have babies. If you're not the one doing the whole pregnancy and labor thing, the physical changes you go through when your kid is born might not be as dramatic, but it's still pretty obvious when you become a parent. You get those dark circles under your eyes from the constant lack of sleep, not to mention your style might change a little bit. Goodbye, expensive duds, hello, spit up stained t-shirts and sweatpants. You might even find yourself with a more cuddly physique, the classic dad bod. But the changes on the outside are just the beginning. Your insides change a lot too, leading to what you might call dad brain, or even just parent brain. Tweaks to your brain tissues and hormones that prepare you to take better care of your kids. But based on what they've learned so far, it seems like a lot of the same brain-related changes that happen in parents who just gave birth also happen in parents who didn't. For example, we know that some areas of the brain tend to get bigger after childbirth. And a 2014 study in the journal Social Neuroscience found similar patterns in brains of new fathers from heterosexual couples. Using MRIs, the researchers looked at 16 new dads' brains and found that the size of certain areas increased in the first few months after their child was born. The areas that grew were involved in things like planning parental behaviors, responding to infant cues, and feeling good about attachment and bonding. Just like an ego death, it's going to be different for everyone and not always what you think it is. So as an example, people always say to me, Brittany, how do I know if I've had an ego death? Well, usually you change. Usually you have a different relationship with your ego and you change, right? When you have a baby and you change for the better, that's how you know it changed you. If you don't change for the better, then you're just different. Now, you can change for the worst as well when you have children. I knew a woman who gave birth to a baby after having a very successful career, very successful marriage. Her and her husband were in their 30s and people were like, you know, you would make a great couple, a great parent couple. Um, you, 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 Not a great couple, a great parent, like parents. You should have babies. So they had two babies. It triggered her bipolar. She's now bedridden. She had to divorce her husband. She couldn't maintain her mental health. She gained hundreds of pounds because of her medication. She couldn't function. She had to quit her job because the chemicals on her body shifted so drastically, triggered her like sleeping borderline or bipolar. And, and now she's just a totally interesting human. That's not who she used to be. Her husband, ex-husband now, has moved on. He's remarried or repartnered. And then their kids... Well, they're definitely kids who had to raise their mother and help their father, right? Because something unique happened. Now they all kind of managed and they are a pretty functional, wonderful family. I really love this family. I really, really love this family. So no shade. But sometimes we always think of the baby as this perfect and wonderful miracle that's always going to be positive in people's lives. And that's just not a fact. Not everyone's meant to be a parent. Ask a parent and they might say... My relationships with my children are absolutely the most important thing in my life, even more important than my relationship with my partner. The journey of being parents, I don't know anyone who says it's easy, but the reward is amazing. We have a lot of gratification from just sort of raising these like beautiful boys who are doing like amazing things every day. But not everyone wants to be a parent, and research suggests those without kids are actually happier. Parenthood is like a roller coaster ride of ups and downs, of highs and lows. And life without children is simply much more stable. It has much less variation.
Meet Amy Blackstone, author of Child Free by Choice. She herself has chosen to be child free. She's also been conducting research on the subject for the last 12 years. By my mid-30s, I had three friends share with me that they were pregnant themselves. I started to really worry that something was wrong with me. What I was relieved to discover is that there is no scientific evidence that there's a thing called a maternal instinct that drives women to become mothers. And sometimes the people that are meant to be parents are people that maybe we wouldn't reflexively think that they're meant to be one, right? Um, in my household, and even amongst my siblings, I think you could say that, oh, maybe Brittany's not, you know, meant to be a mother, but I think other people see me and obviously know I'm meant to be a mother. It just depends on what version of me you're seeing. Same with Trisha, same with everyone else. I think it's pretty clear Trisha's always been meant to be a mother. It just depended on which one she was going to decide to be. She recently put out a video talking about how she used to really um, love, you know, Pamela Anderson and all those toxic relationships. I'm, I'm going to call the Pamela Anderson relationship um, the uh, MGK Megan Fox before MGK Megan Fox. There is a type of character trope in a relationship that exists or like relationship trope where like you see the couples and you know what kind of couple they are, right? Trisha definitely uh, idealized and wanted that relationship when she was in her 20s. I myself did as well. Very toxic emo. I'm in love with you. I'll sacrifice my life for you in a very emo way, love. I get that. But having bad relationships changed me for the better. If I didn't have my toxic relationships in my 20s, I wouldn't have known how to get a good one in my 30s. But that's just for Britney's experience, not necessarily for yours. Some people, it's children. Some people have babies and they don't give a fuck. They ditch that kid. They don't give, they just, they don't give a fuck. Other people have children and it really matters. It changes everything. Most parents I meet who also enjoy being parents will say, your kid changes you, bro. It just, it tells you about yourself. You learn more about yourself. You become more humble. If you're around the kid enough, it changes who you are. And if you're not around the kid, it changes who you are because then you realize you're not around the kid and that, that's gonna take a piece out of who you think you are. But you, you know, know what, if, if, you, if you, and we have friends who aren't great dads or whatever, and you can see it in their kids. I yeah. can, I, and I'm, I'm not it's saying awful. I'm a psychologist or I'm some expert in parenting, but if I go to a person's house and I see the way the kids treat the parents, I go, you're not around enough, man. Yeah. I can, t I promise you, I can tell. Yeah. My son doesn't act like that. Yeah. Because one thing I, you can call me whatever you want, whatever you want. One thing I am is a beast of a dad. I know that. I don't know if I'm a good comic. I don't know if I was a good fighter. I don't know if I'm a good podcaster. That's all up for debate. One thing I know is I'm a fucking good dad, man. Good for you, man. That's a, it's a very, 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 very important quality. And that quality, when your kid becomes an adult, that's going to be just a major factor in how you get along. So I know a lot of people were upset with me saying like, oh my gosh, Brittany, people can't just have kids because they want to be better. I hate to tell you this. I, I think it's been shown through a lot of people's stories that hardships, having responsibility for someone outside of yourself can and often does make you a better person. So I understand what you're saying. I obviously assume the people who have those comments come from very narcissistic households, but so did Trisha. If you grow up or if you listen to how she grew up, she grew up in a very unstable, uh, wishy-washy yo-yo home. And now that she has better relationships with her parents because she never, you know, she had ups and downs throughout her life, she can kind of have more compassion for her parents and realize that she doesn't want to exactly give those as those examples as the only options for existence to her baby. So she said something to the effect of like her parents, her mom was a bartender and her dad was like an entrepreneur who went up and down with success and then finally became successful. And she thought growing up that those were her options. And then she chose sex work. And then she realized like she wants her daughter to know she, she has more options. And I think that comes from a place of actually having tools. So often when I hear people be upset at other people, especially people like Trisha, what I'm hearing is, um, I'm afraid she's the person, who, she's like the person who hurt me. For me, I don't have anyone in my life like Trisha and I'm not enough like Trisha to feel like I identify with her very strongly. So when Trisha fucks up or does something, I don't feel emotionally triggered or impacted by her actions, which allows me to be more compassionate with her because she's not in any way connected to my own psychology. Even if we both have borderline, it's not the same. It doesn't quite manifest the same either. I think I was a much higher functioning borderline throughout my life, so I didn't have to make all the mistakes she made. But I think for her, she was so unstable, so unsure if she had a loving home. Keep in mind, my borderline is, is from my parents not understanding me. It's not from my parents not loving me. I think other people's borderline comes from having 
often households where they don't know if they're loved or not, period. And they're not sure what that means. And they might not even be a priority. I know all my life and I knew all my life that my parents prioritized their children. They just had unorthodox and bubble ways of thinking, which led us to having a lot of controversy. And even to this day makes it that I can't be in my parents' home for more than three, four days before I'm usually like, oh, I'm going to get triggered because we live in a different reality. So it feels like gaslighting. Um, But that's the thing. Reading your comments on my podcast about Trisha feels the same way to me. And that's because we all live in different realities. So when you go around saying Trisha's a grifter, Trisha's a bad person, Trisha's never going to get better, you're just projecting. Now, it's true that Trisha might not get better But it's not really your fucking business, you fucking bitch. And that's the thing. You think it's your business because you're a narcissist, not because you're a good person. If you spend your whole life wanting to take down anyone else, you are basically saying that this other person is me and my identity and it's my whole life. And that's kind of pathetic. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you don't need to protect your tra- project your traumas onto Trisha or me or anyone else in order to have an observation of Trisha. You can say, you know what? I don't know Trisha personally, but through my lens of my trauma and my life and my bubble, this is how I'm feeling about Trisha. But you're not leaving comments saying that. You're being very sure that Trisha is this thing. Many people came to me and said, Brittany, Trisha hasn't changed. She's still on OnlyFans. Can moms not be on OnlyFans? Did you think that I, as a sex worker, first, I'm not going to be on OnlyFans when I have a baby, but also did you think that that was going to be like an argument towards or against Trisha? Like people were writing me like, oh, Brittany, um, Trisha's the same. She's using her baby for videos. And I'm like, she'd be a fool not to. What are you talking about? Like, it's okay. People, all parents, it's normal. And also it's normal that we want to share that we're happy. Do you really think I'm not going to be breastfeeding my baby? on YouTube, you're insane. If you think I'm gonna have a crying baby while I'm streaming and I'm gonna stop my stream versus just throwing a blanket over my boobs and breastfeeding, you're insane, right? But I understand what you're saying. Like she's using her baby for clout. But again, for people who wanna be mothers and people who have borderline, Trisha's a great example of like, okay, not necessarily the most healthy mother, but a mother who's trying and that is an amazing thing to watch. So again, when you tell me, Brittany, you can't just do something to change your life, okay, Hold it, hold the phone. I know what you're saying, but it also isn't true. Many people have a story where having a child changed their life. Many women get pregnant on purpose to save their relationships. A lot of people do a lot of crazy shit because they don't know better or because they think it's the best solution. You cannot go around crucifying everyone for being imperfect because you yourself are imperfect. We are imperfect as a species. Now you can give your insight, you can be compassionate and loving, you can meet people where they are in their journey, but if your whole shtick is just to lecture people for the changes or attempts at changes in their life, I don't have time for you either, boo-boo, because you're just as negative as anyone else being negative. And I, that negativity is not helpful. The amount of people on Trisha's videos leaving comments like, did you notice that she holds her baby weird? Did you notice that she does this weird? Did you notice, did you guys ever consider you're projecting? Did any of you crazy fuckers ever think that maybe I'm the problem? Because when I see Trisha hold her baby, I'm like, yeah, that's how you hold a baby. I've worked in childcare professionally all through my 20s. I worked specifically with newborns and I specifically work with babies two at a time. So I always had two newborns, two babies, and... I hate to tell you this because maybe you don't know. Actually, I would love to tell you this. Babies are incredibly fucking durable. Like, yes, they're soft little beans and they're very fragile when they first come out. But Trisha's baby, that's a durable baby. You know a durable baby when you see one. But also, it's insane to me that people don't know how like flexible and amazing the baby's body is. And yes, though, the skull is very fragile. And though they're very fragile, literally, they're not going to break because she's holding them in a way that you think looks wrong. Remember, Trisha's actually holding her baby, right? And she's not going to be perfect. A lot of parents don't know how to hold their babies. A lot of parents don't even know how to feed their babies. Many parents freak out and call their doctors. Did I kill my baby? What do I do? The baby's not breathing. Oh my gosh. Babies bring out so many fears and anxieties in people. Even if you're a nanny, even if you're a mother or a father, it's anxiety inducing. No one's going to do it perfect though. Period. The end. Again, again, I know all kinds of people who go to therapy, people who had rough parents, people who have parents who don't understand them, people who have parents who fuck them, people who had parents who sold them for sex trafficking, people who have parents who love them so much they didn't know if they could ever do wrong and so they had to go to therapy to figure out failure was okay. Everyone has a parent that's complicated. The question is, what are you going to do as an individual who knows better, if you know better, 
then what are you actually going to do? And are you going to be ready to put your feet to the fire when people want to look at you and decide if you've done great as a parent? Are you going to be compassionate and learn that it's complicated and nuanced to exist on this stupid fucking planet and we're all doing our best? Though some of us, caveat, obviously are not doing our best, and though I think those are few and far in between, I think everyone is trying, even the people leaving those comments, that's them trying, right? They're trying. They're just fucking it up because they're projecting their trauma into other people. But that's what everyone does. Like, that's literally just what everyone does, right? It's just so human. We all do that. Even me during my calls with people, I'm always like, hey, don't let me project onto you. I'm just double checking. Is this what's going on? And they're like, oh my gosh, that's it. Or, oh no, I think that is like a little bit of projection because no one is without fault. No one is without the little bit of narcissism we all have within us, right? It's just sometimes people forget that your trauma can make you a worse narcissist than the one that fucked you over. And you don't understand it because you're so in your trauma and you so feel like bad that you don't understand you're becoming just as ugly as those people who raised you. So again, I understand people's concerns, but I think you really need to check your fucking self. Now, some people will say, never do drugs. It doesn't help you. Well, that's not true. Fact, drugs definitely help change me for the better. For other people, drugs will change them for the worst. Again, going to school, going to college, getting married, having kids, all of these things people do, these permanent or long-term decisions people make, or these very impacting decisions people make, impactful decisions, either which way, It's going to impact the individual so specifically that you cannot black and white decide it's wrong for everybody. Sex work cannot be black and white wrong for everyone or right for everybody. It makes no sense. Being a woman cannot be right for everyone and wrong for everybody. You know, everyone always tells me what to do with my hair, which is like really funny. They'll be like, straighten it, cut it, do this, put it up. It's like even my hair down to my clothes, people have decided they know better for me what to do with it. So of course I'm gonna expect it from YouTube comments, but if you are one of those commenters, I just wanna give you another tool to consider that you're the problem. The reason I say this is again, I don't spend my time going on people's YouTube videos talking about how they're holding their babies wrong. If I was going to do it, I try to do it the nicest way possible. And even that might not be possible. Um, When I got diagnosed with like lupus, everyone is giving me the craziest medical advice from just like, you know, just like interesting advice to I don't know about that to just just so much interesting medical advice. And again, none of these people are doctors. So I, I appreciate it. I like holistic medicine as much as the next person. But I have a fucking doctor and I have a nutritionist and I have my holistic friends. But either which way, I don't, why, like, I don't know if people know this from their perspective. When you're leaving a comment, you do understand that you do not know people's medical history, correct? And like, you don't know their details. Even me, who makes comments about people all the time, I'm obviously open to being wrong any second of any day. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. No biggie, no hurt feelings, that is what it is. But I have a feeling these commenters are not going to be willing to know they're wrong. Like they're not going to be willing to admit it. So again, when you're going through life and you're making a decision about what people should and shouldn't do, you need to decide why. Lots of people need something more important than themselves, like my cat, to have a sense of responsibility. Now, I got Indiana Jones when I was going through a bad breakup and I knew I was ready for a cat. But... I also knew I was ready for the responsibility and Indiana has been my greatest, greatest companion and learning about myself and my sense of responsibility. Like right now, I'm debating if I wanna live overseas or in America for the next couple of years. And the biggest struggle is my cat. I'm literally so worried about her, her going overseas with me. What if she gets lost? What if she leaves the house? What if she dies? What if she doesn't make it through the cargo, whatever? What if she, what if, what, what, what? And a part of me is like, should I not move countries just because I have a cat? That's how much having something outside of yourself can change your whole life, right? So people often will make love, will produce babies. Trisha's always wanted to be a mother. Trisha didn't have a baby to get better. Trisha had a baby because she wanted to be a mother. And if you start saying mentally ill people shouldn't be parents, then none of us are gonna be parents. Because at the end of the day, it's obviously clear that most of us are fucked up in some specific way, in different, different ways, but that's life. Life is beautiful because through the chaos of our evolution, we still get better. So that's the thing. If you think humans are special, you might start creating weird rules in your head about 
who's a good parent versus accepting the fact that we're just probably evolved animals over time and we're all just kind of figuring it out generation by generation. We're not special, in my opinion, from my understanding of what is and who we are. There is no indicator that human beings are any more important than the cat. Not really. Like our consciousness and our ability to communicate is great, but like Indiana talked to animals too. She got conversations and shit going. She's been a mom. She's had babies. Like if you took it down, you took my life and her life. We've lived the same lives in different ways, right? But she's a cat and I'm a human, but we're all creatures of an evolved earth. So I think for me, it's about humbling myself, not down to the animal, but to know I'm a part of the ecosystem of the earth. So I don't start thinking I'm better than everyone else, even my own humanity, that I'm like this godlike creature who's perfect in every way. To have the audacity to leave comments on people's videos about, you know, um, if they would only listen to me, I could save their life. It's like, you sound crazy. Oh gosh, the way she's holding her baby. You guys are all conspiracy theorists. Like it's kind of insane. Or, oh, Trisha Paytas is a bad mom because she's a sex worker. Fuck you. Fuck you. Perfectly humble, wholesome religious mothers cause their kids to commit suicide because they're anti-gay. I don't want to hear you guys talking about, you know, what makes a good mother. You know what makes a good parent? Don't fuck your kid. Don't beat your kid, like, abusively. Don't beat your kid, period, really. But, like, don't, you know what I mean? There's, like, a generational thing that happens over time. People learn corporal punishment on a spectrum, so caveat. But, obviously, like, don't fucking rape your kids. Don't sell them into sex slavery. Do as good by them as you can and try your best to fucking love them the best you can, even when life is complicated. Again, we can't go around regulating people's bodies from abortions or whether or not they should be parents. We can't live in a world, or we shouldn't live in a world, I think, where people aren't free to, to live out their existence. We only have one life on earth and then you die. Do you really want to spend it leaving comments on Trisha Paytas' videos or doubting that change can happen when change is obviously clearly an, a, a great, um, like an instigator for, for betterness? And like, and again, it's not always that way. It's not about the details. You can't say, don't do this. You cannot say, I'll just have a baby and I'll get better. That's not how it works. Usually people, oh my God, I'm having a baby. Oh my God, I'm having a baby. Oh my God, now I have to be serious. It's kind of like when you're in a couple and you like decide to be more healthy for your partner because now it's not just about you. I did that with my partner. We had to discuss um, just like, you know, life choices. You know, are we going to be healthy? How healthy are we going to be? Is our goal to stay alive for each other? Is our goal to, you know, eat junk food and get fat and smoke until we both die at 40? Like, what's our goal? Because the truth is, is when I'm single, I have a little bit more of a reckless habit of abusing my body, like maybe eating more junk food or maybe being tempted to smoke more. I just have things that I'm more lax on when I'm single than when I'm in a partnership. Because when I'm in a partnership, the real like possibility of children coming into the picture is now possible in such a distinctly clear way that my brain is like, oh, you have to stay alive for these kids. You cannot die on your children. You know, in my life, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of deaths and I've seen young people in their 40s and 50s die on their kids and they don't mean to do it. And off of the time, it's because of morbid obesity, um, health related issues, choices they made with their diets. And I I feel for them. I'm not even blaming them. Because in their heads, I do not believe and I refuse to believe that they're in any way truly understanding that they're going to die. I think they all, like children, think it's not going to happen to me. I'm going to be the fat guy who lives forever. I'm going to be the smoker who lives forever. I'm going to be the race car driver that lives forever. And I love that. I love that optimism. Um, I like to think that I'm not the um, the special person, though. And I always assume it's going to happen to me. So like with my lupus, they told me to stop smoking because of blood clots. And I stopped smoking because I assume I am going to be the dumb fuck who's smoking one time on a live stream and fucking blood clot. And I'm dead just on stream, bros. So I I assume I'm never the the exception. <laughs> and I think that's kind of why I have the upper hand on all of existence sometimes. Because I think everyone remains as adolescent as when they were when they were like 14 and 15 it's not gonna happen to me man it's not gonna happen to me but it probably is you're probably gonna fuck up you're probably gonna drive drunk one day you're probably gonna hit prison one time you're probably gonna be falsely accused one day you're probably gonna slip up on a bill and not paid on time you you might even get your kids taken away from you and given back to you you might have to experience court systems or jail time or you know whatever it is it might happen to you. You might be the person who dies at 21 or gets married at 45 or the virgin until 60 and then finally finds the love of his life and stays with them until they're 70 or 90 or whatever it is. The point is, is that you don't know which story is going to be yours until it's happening, until you're aware of it. But if you just stop right now and look at your life, who are you in the story? 
what story are you in? Are you in like Clueless? Bring it on. Are you like a head cheerleader? Are you like the popular girl in school? Are you like in House of Cards? Are you like the politician? Are you in, uh, I don't know, name anything here, insert show here, insert trope here. You just have to make a decision about what are you actually doing with your life? So again, I look at my life and I try to pay attention to my habits and I try to decide, am I okay being the story character that I obviously am? I'm really happy with my choices. I have plenty of regrets and none of them that I can go back and change and none of them that I would because it is what it is. Sometimes I'm really upset with past Brittany and the things that she's decided to do. But then I remember that like, fuck it, whatever, it got me here. And it's not that it got me here, but it kind of is that it got me here. You know how everyone says, um, I want to be like a perfect parent or I want to be a great student. Or, I want to be great at everything. It's like, it's not going to happen, bro. So you just have to do harm reduction. Dr. Lindsay Doe is a wonderful um, person on YouTube who makes like content about, you know, um, everything from self-harm to sex to even like sympathy for pedophiles, pe people with, pre pre people with uh, predispositions towards attraction with children. Like we're talking about preventative harm, like preventing harm, preventative work. So I understand everyone is out here already traumatized and then everyone is out here trying to prevent, but we need to just be re like more centered and nuanced about where we are. So if I get somebody who's in the middle of trauma and I get someone and I'm working with someone and they're like, hey, I'm having thoughts about, um, um, I don't know, self-harm. It's like, oh, okay, what does that look like? And they're like, oh, overeating. And I know for a lot of people, they're going to think, oh, that's not self-harm. You're just like overeating and having fun. Gluttony is one of the greatest sins in the world for a reason. Gluttony is not good for you. Sometimes on occasion, we all have a Thanksgiving, New Year's kind of weekend. We all like party, 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 eat, 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 drink, drink, drink. But in general, people who are gluttonous all the time, there's something in you that is like disgusted with yourself for a good reason. Because, because overconsumption has no balance to it, you feel that in yourself. So when you're going throughout life and you feel gluttonous on consuming media or negativity or anything and you wonder why you feel slow or or like that kind of ugliness comes upon your face ask yourself am I balanced am I being gluttonous with what I am uh involving myself with so many people have this idea that they're good and I think that you're probably right I think all of us are basically good except for a few like percentage percentage percentages so I think most of the world is good and that's going to be, um, I think, next week's podcast or maybe the week after. I want to make a case for why the world is mostly good and mostly functional because a lot of people are so in their trauma. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're waking up every day sad, every day upset, every day depressed, every day, every day, this is your journey, not anyone else's. It's some other people's. Some people will have your journey. Some of us have been there and gotten out, but it doesn't have to be your life. It's just right now, this moment in time. And it's your moment in time. It's not about us. So if you're watching Trisha or watching this person or watching this person and you're, you're angry and you notice that you're feeling like really dark feelings, that's you, boo-boo. That's not us, right? And you might be the person in the room that's bringing everyone the fuck down for no other reason than that's your journey and you just don't know it. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, pause. Are you that person? Or are you doing relatively fine? Are you waking up every day joyful? And if you're not, then you gotta look inward. It has nothing to do with YouTubers or other people. And then you have to decide what are you gonna do to become more joyful? For Trisha, it was getting married to a man who understood her, Moses, and making love and having a baby and doing everything she could to fulfill that dream of being a mother. For me, it was a matter of being like focused on myself, knowing why I existed, knowing what the point of existence was, knowing why we are here as a species, and then finding along that journey of trying to figure that out, stabilizing my life towards joy. Now that led me to, again, a place I never thought I would be, in the middle of nowhere in a country town. It's very chill. I like it. But it's not where I thought I would be, right? I thought I'd be in the city, like a big CEO feminist. And now I'm not even a feminist, really. I just got feminist energy. You know what I'm saying? But all of these things had to happen through a lot of mistakes. Watch my video, Brittany Simon Through the Levels, or uh, Brittany Simon Borderline uh, Through the Borderline whatever, because those two videos have a journey that I'm so uh, a little embarrassed about, a little proud about, that will show you that none of us come out perfect, especially not me, especially not fucking Trisha right? But the thing is, if you know anything about mental illness, and I know a few things, 
there is a difference between a mentally Ill, ill person who's just trying to win this game of capitalism and monopoly and a person who's maliciously evil. And I think you need to know the difference. When I look at Kanye, I think it's pretty clear he's mentally ill. And I think it's pretty clear that he's lost his grasp on reality, but that's because of his bipolar and it's probably because he's not getting it treated, right? He's not seeking stability. Normally stable people have a way of being and it's not your values. It's not your morals. You cannot decide if somebody's stable mentally because it doesn't match your values. That in itself is sort of insane, but not in the D like not in the um like DMS D DSM way DSM way. It's not like um, it's not in that way. You're not like certifiably insane. You're just in a bubble and you're in your own reality. It's like when the religious people say the gay people are insane because in their heads they can't imagine it. But then the moment they have gay children, they figure the sin is what's insane and not the child. But like that kind of proves that the action itself isn't that big of a deal because it's it's like a whole thing where people just like usually hit the surface level of their understanding of themselves and never go deeper, which is fine. But that's why you're still angry on Twitter yelling at Trisha. That's why you're still doing these things. And I totally get it. I 100% love to rant and rave. Have you seen me rant and rave about TikTokers? I'm so good at it. But in no way, shape, or form do I think those people are evil or bad. Well, all these other people in these comments think like Trisha shouldn't have a baby and people should like cancel Trisha. If you're afraid of Trisha Paytas, you're weak. Yeah. And I get it. I've been weak before too. Yeah. It's scary looking at a person who's unstable and feeling fear when they don't even know you or won't even be in your life. It's scary when you go on Twitter and you just see a username and it's enough to put fear in your body. It's scary being weak because you're not sure if you're going to be able to handle a tweet or a Trisha Paytas or an Andrew Tate or anyone else on the internet that's sensationalized and like trolling their way into some sort of fame, which you contribute to because you love to live to hate them. It's hard being weak, right? It's hard being weak. And that's why you have to find strength in your life by being responsible for your choices and owning your mistakes, which takes a lot of effort. And I see Trisha making that effort and I don't see a lot of her haters making that effort, which is not that surprising because usually there is a cesspool of the internet that exists just to hate people. I think it's clear certain people even have whole audiences of these kinds of people. And I understand that if you're in a, a, a bubble that is like constantly sad and depressed and anxious and all of these things, you're maybe going to think the whole world is that way. But a lot of us are living pretty happy lives and we weren't always, but we worked really hard to get here. We found strength outside of our weaknesses and through our weaknesses to end up in our joys. So again, I'm not trying to tell you to live your life how you want. I'm just like pointing out an obvious that you might not be seeing because you might be too in your trauma. Right. So again, every time I'm introduced to a bubble that I forget exists, like poor people who don't know how to shop for themselves. Amazing. Because, you know, I always think poor people are resilient and amazing and smart and so good at like pinching pennies. But that's because the poor people I grew around, like were really good about that. But there are bubbles of people who don't even know how to do that, which is so interesting. Again, so fascinating. So it's like you're relearning it. You're kind of shocked, like, oh, my God, people live this way. And then you're like, why? And then there's always a why. But the real reason why takes much more patience and openness than I think people are willing to admit. There's a reason why people in your life will grow up with the nicest, most supportive, amazing parents and still end up in therapy because they were loved too much. Everyone is so different. You cannot parent universally the same. You cannot exist the same. You cannot woman the same. You cannot universally man the same. Everyone is gonna have a different experience. And you yourself, have to pick the one that's gonna work for you and only you. For Trisha, it was this road. She said on a video recently, I think just today, actually, I watched it this morning, um, that she was debating sex work and how her child would view that. And even for me as a future mom, I love being naked and I want my kid to be super sex positive. I do question like, when are we gonna tell them I'm on OnlyFans? Like, when are we, uh, how naked am I going to be in the house? Are we going to be a nudist household? Are we going to be a clothes household? Like these are all questions I want to know ahead of time um, because I'm planning my pregnancy. A lot of people, most people in the whole world did not plan their pregnancies the way that we do now because I can afford birth control, right? I get access to birth control where I can decide when I'm going to have a baby versus other people, all of our generations moving up, my mother's included, 
right? They just had babies because they were in love or had, or God forbid, were raped or, you know, they just had babies. I get the luxury of planning my baby. So I get to plan to the best of my ability. And even then, I'm going to fuck up. I'm so worried about it. And I know it's going to happen. But that's life. You do your best and you hope it's good enough. And when it's not, you try your best to change it so it is. But you are not perfect. You will never be perfect. And unless somebody's truly evil, I, I think it's, I think it's, a worse reflection on you, how you spend your time criticizing other people, myself included, right? I try really hard to be reasonable with my observations while understanding. I think it helps that for me, I know all most people are good. So for me, it makes it much easier to like criticize people because I don't mean to like demoralize them at the same time. I think most people are good, especially in their own narrative, including those people leaving mean comments on Trisha's videos or on my videos or anyone else's videos, right? Um, but I think you forget that people just don't live your story. And so they're going to have a different way of handling their life. They're going to be wishy-washy in ways you're not. They're going to go back and forth. They're not going to, they're not going to look the way you need them to look, but I don't think you do or either. I actually am convinced that most people are only this critical of others because they know they failed in themselves. I see it in conservative bubbles a lot, like religious bubbles, where they'll say like, gay people are always so miserable. Do you notice they're so miserable? And I was like, yeah, do you think that's because they were raised in homes where they don't feel seen or loved or humanized? And so they always feel kind of miserable. And they're like, no, 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 no. It's because they're gay. And I'm like, yeah, but like, imagine you were in a bubble, like my parents were, where you're a minority religious group and you're being constantly kicked out, tortured, fired from jobs, not allowed in school because you're not a certain religion. It sucks, right? And they're like, yeah, that obviously sucks. I'm being attacked. I'm like, right. Is it because you're, and they're like Catholic. And I'm like, right. So is it Catholicism that's making you miserable? Or is it the fact that you're Catholic in a Muslim country? Is it the fact that you're gay that makes you miserable or that you're gay in a conservative household? Because I think if you're really gay, it can't make you miserable because it's just who you are. How you process it can make you miserable. I don't think your gayness itself can make you, make you miserable. I don't think your transness itself can make you miserable. I think it's how you think about your transness, often rooted in shame, and how, you, how your community, your bubble, shames you for that trans, transness or gayness or LGBTness. So again, for me, I told you guys this in a live show, um, I was gonna move to a more conservative state to live next to my farm brother, but then I realized like if my kids are trans or super gay, I want them to be themselves and they're not going to always feel comfortable doing that, I think, in a much more conservative place. So even now, even though I'm pretty happy where I am, I'm really considering if I should move to a more progressive area-ish for my kids, even though I also hate super progressive areas because no one's balanced. Everyone's lacking balance. So again, I'm thinking about the future and how to, how to give my kids opportunities because I was a queer kid stuck in a conservative bubble. But if I was born into a lot of people's homes, it would be misery for me, even if it wasn't a conservative home. Some liberal homes drive me crazy. Progressive homes can trigger me too. It's just, it's not gonna be perfect in any way, life. It's just never gonna be perfect. So we have to do our best. You just have to hope for the best and be optimistic and ask yourself, am I a warm person or am I a person bringing down the party? Do you know what I mean? Like, am I actually helping or am I, am I making it worse for people? And I think that's what you have to ask yourself. And then if you're saying, well, I'm making it good for some people, be honest about who those some people are and maybe stick to those circles. If you're not going to be able to help a Trisha Paytas, leave her alone, right? Like, don't be mean to her just because you're bored or because you feel self-righteous. How does that make you different from anyone else who thinks they have the right to stone you to death, hang you to death, put you in jail for the rest of your life, make decisions about um, like whether or not you should be able to have kids or exist? I don't understand how you manage to go to sleep at night thinking I'm the good person when you're also internally thinking about how disgusting people are for just trying. Do you know what I mean? And I get it. We all have petty thoughts. Again, I really hate gluttony. I think gluttony is like the most disgusting thing in the world, but that's because it's so clearly lacking balance. And I think weakness is a part of the human condition, but it's obviously kind of disgusting because weakness is specific and it's not um, weakness, i.e. vulnerability. Vulnerability is not the same as weakness. Vulnerability can lend to weakness, 
which is why you're hoping when you're vulnerable, you have somebody there who respects it and doesn't enact that weakness and use it against you. Weakness though, weakness of character, weakness of honor, weakness of discipline, weakness of values, that's a very specific kind of weakness. That has nothing to do with crying or thinking I'm, you know, ooh, less than. That's not the kind of weakness I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about weakness of spirit, weakness of character. Where is your sense of honor, right? And are you an ugly person? And I don't mean physically, boo-boo. You know I don't. I mean in your heart of hearts. Are you really a good person? I think you probably are. But even good people can do bad things. And you might just be one of those people. And that is the hardest thing that we have to face in our lives. Are we the good people who do bad things? That's my podcast. I have no long how long. I have no idea how long I've been recording, actually. Um, this is probably going to be really short. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Just a reminder that I am editing my own podcast currently because I cannot afford to pay Len a fair wage. And I would really like to. Len is my editor. If you guys would like, please leave a like on this video and a comment in the sections down below. Please, 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 please join Patreon if you would like. Discord is $10 a month and it's an amazing community. It's a great group of adults who think it's 18 plus because we talk about philosophy and politics and I don't want to get sued by anyone's parents. So if you guys would like to join us, please join our Patreon. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Stuck in my head In real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed And I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm Sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun.